Some things are fascinating to watch. An artist at work, a child discovering something new. A dog, the ones that catch the frisbees at halftime shows. Fascinating to watch. Other things, you have to kind of participate in it to get it. Some things are boring unless you're participating in it. Don't believe me? How often have you seen live chess on TV? How many of you are interested in sitting and just watching someone swim? Unless it's the Olympics and they're racing, swimming by itself is kind of boring to watch. That's why lifeguards have to have so many breaks. You can only stare at someone swimming back and forth so long before you're bored. Soccer fits into this category, especially when it's a defensive game and especially when it's on American TV. If you're not participating, if you're not a part of it, it just doesn't feel the same. Participation's important. It's important. I'm okay with people getting awards for participation. There's a lot of other people that don't even show up. I'm okay with teachers giving students extra credit for class participation. There's something to be said for speaking up. Participation is important in the decision making, in voting, family time, and relationship building. Participation is undervalued sometimes. It's important. And one of the most important places for participation is faith. Now, this is not a plea for better church attendance, although I'm not against it. It's not a pitch for some new program or ministry. In reality, participation in our faith is much bigger and more than just going to church. In the Christmas story, the shepherds are in the field doing their thing. They are invited they are invited to participate in something bigger, something more amazing than they had ever imagined. They could have heard the news. They could have heard the news and been content with having heard amazing news. They could have been content having received a song from the angels and gone back to business as usual. Can you imagine the shepherds sitting in the field? Well, that was different. What do you think that was all about? Anybody seen a wolf lately? Hey, Bob, which of these sheep do you think is going to poop next? Let's take bets. They could have gone back to their regular life as shepherds, sitting on the hillside at night. They could have just enjoyed the music. They could have just listened to the angels, waved their lanterns back and forth like they're at a concert. We might use cell phones today. Some of you are thinking, that was a lighter in my day. They could have just sat around and argued about what it all meant. So which of those were seraphim and which ones were cherubim? What do you think, John? Hey, Sue, how do you recognize the angels from heavenly hosts? And if they're hosts in heaven, what are they hosting and who are they giving the good seats to? They could have just sat and debated all of these important theological questions. They could have asked, do you think a baby Messiah is a real thing? And what would you feed it? They could have just had the debates, or they could have just sat back and waited to see what would happen. Waited to see what would happen and say, yep, we knew it, told you so. But they didn't. Instead, they got up and they went. They got up and they got involved. There was an invitation, there was an opportunity, and they did not let it pass them by. The shepherds received an invitation to participate. And they took full advantage. And in doing so, set a powerful example for us. There's no way they could know exactly what was going on. They had to figure out also what to do with all these sheep. That if they're the night watch, clearly didn't belong to them. Because if you own all the sheep, you're paying somebody else to watch them at night. They were responsible for things, for property, for jobs. They sorted it all out, though. They didn't let that stop them. They didn't let the logistics keep them from participating. They figured it out. They worked it out. And I'm sure one of the shepherds thought, my going isn't going to make a difference anyway. I'm sure one of the shepherds thought, I don't really like these other shepherds I'm traveling with. I'm sure one of the shepherds thought, I'm not sure I believe in this God stuff anyway. I'm sure they had fears, doubts, one thing or another they could have been doing instead. 
But instead, they got up. They got up. They got involved. They got involved. The shepherds went to see. They went to see, went to be present. They went to tell the story. And as they went, they saw the baby just as been told to them. And they saw the parents. And it sounds like they saw some others, too. Did you catch the subtlety in the story? They shared what they had heard, and all who heard it were amazed. Well, if it's just Mary and Joseph, they had already gotten their own angels. They knew this already. What's to amaze them? Is it that shepherds came? Is it that they brought all the sheep into town? Is it that the shepherds smelled bad? Or maybe they didn't smell bad, and that was amazing. Or maybe other people had gathered around. There's a baby. Have you seen what babies do to a crowd? Oh, they pull it in. They pull in a crowd. Can you imagine? Maybe others got messages from angels, too. Maybe the shepherds are the only ones that Luke tells the story of on their journey. Maybe there were some handmaids. Maybe there were some prostitutes. Maybe there were some lepers. Okay, maybe there was a drummer boy. We don't know. Maybe others got an angel, too. But however this happened, it seems like there's somebody else they're talking to. Probably not the sheep. I don't think Fluffy got what was going on. There were people that seemed to be in the conversation. We don't know who they are, but it doesn't matter. The point is the shepherds were telling the story. The shepherds were participating. They had been filled by something, and they were letting it out. They had let something into their life, and they could not contain it. What do we call that? Joy. Joy. And Mary, Mary, hearing the joy of the shepherds, hearing how others are responding, she wonders, she ponders, and she treasures all these things in her heart. Whose words are she treasuring? What are they saying? Are these voices of angels? Are these other visitors who are pontificating? Are these other prophecies coming to be told? Is it the words of the shepherds and how others are responding? Or does it just feel good to have somebody talking about your baby while you snuggle it up against your jaw? It seems that others were participating in the story. Not main characters, not named individuals, but others participating, listening, talking, sharing. How will we participate in Christmas? Will we read the story anew to hear the words of hope in the face of our fears? Will we talk to someone about our fears and our doubts, our hopes and our dreams? Will we serve others and listen to others as they share their story? Will we pray, sing, or proclaim our own story, our own experiences of God with us? How will we participate this Christmas? Will we engage others in community or stay on the fringe? Will we dare to ask questions or pretend we've got it all figured out? Will we try loving or hide behind our judgment? And critique. How will we participate this Christmas? Will we watch from a distance, catch a couple of TV specials, then settle in for a long winter's nap? Will we complain about how things should be, how they used to be, and sit and pout? Will we reminisce about things and how they could have been, and wait for God to send the 1950s anew? Or will we participate? Will we participate in our faith? Some things are worth watching. Some things are fascinating to watch. Carolers singing, the way people care for others. Yes, and even the Grinch, Charlie Brown, and a couple other specific Christmas specials. But watching doesn't do Christmas justice. Just watching doesn't do Christmas justice. Watching Christmas doesn't give the full experience. It's like watching a parade on TV and acting like you've been there. You only get a glimpse of the full experience. I remember the first time we took my mother on a trip to Pasadena. We were living in Kentucky at the time, and she had a bucket list trip of going to see the Rose Parade. 
She had watched it since she was a child. She had grown up in eastern Kentucky hearing about it. She had visited all the places in New England in her young adult years. She had been up and down the eastern seaboard, seen rallies and parades and events, but never the Rose Parade, and it always fascinated her. We came out and we watched it, and we came out on the coldest, the coldest New Year's Day in 25 years. We went and bought winter clothes at Target. People who had plenty of winter clothes in our closets back home came and bought what Californians thought were winter clothes. We put layers of them on to try to stay warm. We huddled together. We drank hot chocolate slowly because we liked it warming our hands more than drinking it. We watched the parade, and then we found out after the parade, there's another parade. Those of you who've lived in this area a long time may know this. There's protesters who follow the parade. There are crazy people who follow the parade. There are religious nuts who follow the parade. They come in behind it, carrying banners. Some actually try to interrupt the parade, running across with political signs, advocacy signs, trying to get themselves seen and heard on TV. There's so much you never see on TV. It's chaos. It's crazy. It's a total mess, and it was spectacular. Until we had participated, we never knew what the parade was fully like. We had only seen it from a distance. Some people have been wished a Merry Christmas, and they have received it as a curmudgeon. Some have been wished a Merry Christmas, and they've taken it as a pleasantry. Some have been wished a Merry Christmas, and they've received it as a blessing. But that's all they've received because they've yet to participate. Christmas is so much more than something we watch. Faith is something more than something we witness. But it is something we bear witness to. It is a story we tell, is an activity we engage in. Christmas begs for participation. How will we participate this year? In the midst of Christmas that can be beautiful and pageant-like. In the midst of Christmas that can feel like chaos and a hot mess. How will we participate? Because it's when we engage. It's when we become part of the story that we feel Christ come anew. And we know what those shepherds felt. We call it joy. Amen. Amen.